Welcome to Evora. A pretty unknown but magnificent little country town in Portugal. Dominated by all white houses with yellow accents. Divided by thousands of tiny maze-like cobblestone alleys. In which you will definitely get lost sooner or later. I seem to be one of the only few tourists in this town and I could experience the true local Portuguese people untouched by tourism. In the streets you can find many cute and tiny shops. Amazing street art. And chill coffee shops with amazing espressos for 50 cents. But soon my hitchhiking legs were itching again and it was time to hitchhike on in the direction of probably one of the most opposite towns to Evora, the capital Lisbon. Passa Lisboa! Direction! Okay. Obrigada. Nada. Falas português? Ah, não. Não português. Espanhol? Oh, um pouquinho. Um pouquinho também. Okay. <laughs> uh, em que país é? De Alemanha. Ah, Ale Germany. After a short wait, I got picked up by a huge truck that was transporting dog food. I was really excited because hitchhiking trucks is really something special, and I did not hitchhike one for a while. Simply sitting up there and having such a great view to the front is absolutely amazing. The truck driver was really friendly but did not want to be on camera since it is forbidden in his contract to pick up any hitchhikers. But he was a hitchhiker himself when he was young and chooses to support the tradition. We drove through the amazing Portuguese countryside and stopped for lunch in a very local truck stop restaurant. He insisted to invite me on a beer and a full plate of local Portuguese goodness. So good. It's just the right food for today. There was even a milky and creamy Portuguese dessert. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Wow. After a very long wait at a highway toll station, I finally got picked up by a Ukrainian girl living in Portugal who brought me into the city center of Lisbon. Привет! Привет! И как тебя зовут? Виктория. Виктория. Спасибо. Спасибо. Виктория is from the Ukraine originally. Yes, I'm from Ukraine. I'm I'm live a lot of time in Portugal and Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. And how would the world of your dreams look like? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> A better world. Maybe. One, one thing. No uh, traffic in Lisbon. No traffic in Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no traffic. Spasiba. <laughs> the capital has its very own charm. It convinces with beautiful, colorful European architecture, being close to the sea, and a tranquil, summerish atmosphere, even in winter. Only the hordes of tourists are flooding the center, forcing more and more locals to move away.
I got pretty lucky to stumble upon an interesting German girl in my hostel who was crazy enough to allow me to kidnap her for some hitchhiking. It was her first time hitchhiking and I think she liked this way of traveling, even though we had a pretty rough start trying to hitchhike north out of Lisbon. Getting rides in Portugal is in general pretty challenging and it took us almost a week to hitchhike to Porto, a distance which I would hitchhike with no problem in half a day in Germany. But I was happy. Happy to see her happy in the struggle that hitchhiking throws at you sometimes. Amazingly, life gave us pretty much the full spectrum of the hitchhiking experience, including waiting. Waiting for three hours. Watching seagulls. Pit stops in cute little cafes. She made this cake. Chocolate cake. Exploring unknown little trails. <laughs> Admiring the fascinating Atlantic waves. Diving deep into the Portuguese countryside. Scouting for wild camping spots. Being exposed to warm sunsets and the strong ice cold wind. Waking up in paradise. Me letting my hitchhiking trainee doing all the work and chilling out. Getting shown the best fruit market by a local. Wish you a great day. Okay, thank you. Finding the cutest bird ever. Discovering a random little fishing village. Hiking through the woods. <laughs> Exploring abandoned buildings. Sweating up hills. Meeting kind locals who drive us a little further. Thank you so much and have a great day. You too, have a nice travel. <laughs> Thank you. Walking against a strong coastal wind. Falling asleep in nature again. Uncomfortably walking along streets. Meeting hospitable locals that invite us for a drink. So now we got really lucky because we met Elder. It's <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and Elder um, gave us a lift to Nazare, which is a slight detour for him. So thank you so much. Okay. And now he also, welcome. he also decided to show us another little town here, which is really beautiful. And we stopped for some beers and, and some little of these traditional cakes here. So very nice to meet you and thank you for a little tour. Walking through tall grass. Escaping the storm clouds. Then, finally, we arrived in Porto, exploring this beautiful but rainy town with our cameras and trying the irresistible port wine. Then again, it was time to say goodbye, for each of us to follow our own projects and travel plans. This is definitely the biggest drawback of full-time travel for me. Establishing and maintaining deep connections is so much more challenging. The reality of life is that nothing lasts forever and every lifestyle has its advantages and disadvantages. In a sense, only that is what makes life interesting with the incredibly hard to master art of living in the moment 
enabling you to experience the full happiness potential of existence. Letting my hitchhiking. <laughs> Let. <laughs> Me letting my hitchhiking trainee doing all the work and chilling out. Oh, it's regnet. <laughs> so schlimm. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> Look at that orange trees growing in the middle of the streets. Orange trees. Orange, orange, orange. That's how cool Portugal is. <laughs> no need any more explaining.